Welcome to Talk Tennis. Today we're here talking about the Prince Techstream ATS Tour Rackets. And joining me is Chris, Tiffany, and Troy. Thanks, you guys. What's up? Hey. Um, for our listeners out there, we attempted to record this podcast um, a while ago. And fun fact, there was a massive power outage throughout the whole building and shut the whole building down. And this is take two. Such as our ATS took the power out. <laughs> it's very electric. We're feeling the electric vibes. We love this racket um, or rackets. There's a whole group of them. So we're going to try to recreate the greatness that we started in this episode. Um, I don't even remember how we started the previous one, but Tiffany, have you officially made the switch? Like, I think now we can talk about that. Oh, definitely. Yes, we can talk about that. And yes, I brought it with me. Yes. Right here. Oh, I, I love have it. Two of them. I, have a, I have my older one, but right here on top, I have the newer one too. Okay, cool. We're going to get into it, but Tiff has officially made this her racket of choice. I actually have made the 98, not my racket of choice. We're not ready to commit like that, but um, it is my second racket on my list. So excited about that. And then we have the 95 and the 100 to talk about. And it sounds like Chris really likes that 95. So let's go, Troy. I'm going to ask you first, what has Prince changed to make this tour family of rackets new. Tell me a little bit about the ATS technology. Yeah, the ATS technology basically is just a kind of slight uh, tweak or improvement um, from the previous two generations of the tech stream. So it stands for anti-torque system. And basically um, what they did is they took the original, so the original tech stream was like the lar- the lightest strongest kind of carbon fiber they could use. That was the first generation. Um, the second generation of the tours, they added the Toron, uh, which is kind of like a Kevlar Aramid type of fiber and braided it in with the tech stream. So that kind of made the racket a little firmer, definitely um, pretty solid feeling. And then with this ATS, they basically just kind of strategically placed and kind of enhanced the the positioning of the of the tech stream and the tour on so okay. kind of like kind of beefed it up or kind of stabilized the frame especially like in those top corners of the hoop to really um, improve that torsional stability or kind of help increase that twist weight if you talk about that type of thing so right. that's kind of the the um, evolution in the technology and I know um, we talked about this before but Chris kind of had a be- a really good way of explaining it as far as feel wise goes like on the court so. yeah that's what I was going to say Chris can you tell us how that translates into what you felt between this one and previous generations yeah so I with the first generation of the tools I really enjoyed the feel um, of the rackets that really could feel that ball pocket in there is really plush response I think the second gen um, we gained some power, but maybe lost a little bit of that. And I think this one, it's come back around again. So we've got um, the feel of the early ones. And then with that increased stability, especially up at like 10 and 2, uh, just getting way more like core penetration on my shots and plow through and just really enjoying um, the overall response of the rackets. I think they've, they've really done a nice job of dialing it in. And I think if you've used either of the previous versions this is these are still tall rackets they're very easy to transition into um so yeah subtle update but a really nice one nice and i was going to also lean on you guys probably troy and chris maybe you can talk to the audience about where the tours kind of fit in the prince lineup troy maybe you can start and then chris i would love to hear you tell us what rackets kind of compete against it or similar from other brands yeah, so for me, and, and kind of going back even to just like the first generation, the tour line, you know, does a really good job. I, I definitely say it still has a lot of that control and feel aspect that most players are looking for, but definitely gives you a little more forgiveness and a little boost in power compared to something like the Phantom line. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's not going to be quite as extreme as the power maybe spin as you would get from something like uh, the Prince Beast line or the Warrior that we still have or um, even like the Vortex or the Ripstick. So those are like definitely more power spin, very, very modern. Mm -hmm. I think the Tour line does a really good job of bridging the gap between that really soft classic feel and the extreme power spin of the modern game. So it's a really nice blend, I think. Nice. 
And Chris, what do you think? What other rackets from other brands would you kind of put in a demo package if you're trying out some of the different tours? Um, so if I was going to do the 98, I would definitely be throwing in probably the Technofiber TF40 305 um, with the 16 mains. Um, I would, if I wanted to try something a little stiffer and a little crisper feeling, I might throw um, a Bubble R Pure Strike in there. Again, um, you know, going with a, a nice open pattern 16 main version. Um, Yonex, you know, I think that these are more kind of like V Core Pro than they are V Core or E Zone, um, just because of that feel and the control. Um, and then, uh, you know, you've got Wilson with the blades and stuff like that. So I think these rackets really fit in there. Dunlop CXs would be in there as well, especially when you get into the 95. I, you know, I think I would hit the the 200 tour from Dunlop um, side by side with that one. And then maybe, you know, again, if I wanted a firmer feel, I, I would maybe look at like a Pure Strike tour or, or something like that. Um, you could even, I think, throw in some pro staffs. And uh, Michelle, I know, you know, you really like the 98 and you're a pro staff player. So maybe, you know, speak on the similarities of, of those two. Yeah, no, I would agree. I think that the Tour 98 kind of like blends that controllable power. I know that sounds a little cliche, but there's enough control, but enough built in power to put away points. Um, so and Tiff, I was going to say, let's jump into talking about specific models. But I wanted to kind of hear a little bit about your play test with the 100p. But also, I know you've been looking at some other rackets. So what else were you considering before deciding to continue using that 100p? Well, it's going to the 100p. I've been playing with the 2015 version from shortly after we did the play test. I didn't switch right away. It's one of those things that I really love the racket, but you know, you continue to play with it before you fully decide. And so I've been playing with that version for a really long time now. Um, I did like the 2019 version, but as Chris hit upon, it did, and Troy hit upon, it does have a bit of a crisper feel. And I just felt that the playability was there, but I just preferred the feel of the 2015. And moving into the 2022 ATS version, I have that more flexible feel, and that's really what I'm looking for. And so I really like that the comfort uh, is there and that just really familiar the feel that the 2015 is very similar to my the, to the 2022. So that's why I decided that I would go ahead and make the switch and um, I'm really enjoying it. Trying out all kinds of different strings still. Um, previously, I could go back and forth between hybrids and full beds of poly. And other rackets that I was looking at, Chris had mentioned the V-Core Pro line. So one of the rackets along the way that over the years that I've been playing with the Textream Tour 100P, ones that the V-Core Pro 100 has always been on my list of really likes and um, almost switching, but I always did end up sticking with the 100P. Just It weighs just a little bit more, 300 grams of the V-Core Pro 100 versus the 305 grams of the 100P. So it just felt the 100P just feels just slightly more stable. And that's why I ended up sticking with the 100P over the, over the years. Other rackets, another Yonex. This latest E-Zone is uh, the, the 100. I really, really like that racket. Um, it's offering a little bit more power. But uh, I don't know, I just like, I like the slightly tighter string pattern of the 100P, just I feel a little bit more confident with my directional control. I, I think that the V-Zone 100 has good control, but I feel like that the 100P offers me just a little bit more. Other rackets that I really liked were, I love the Gravity Tour, which the Gravity Tour from Head has really similar specs too. So I really could actually pick up any of those rackets and be really happy with them, but the 100P is just so familiar for me since I've been playing with it since 2015. The swing through the air, especially on serve, is really important to me since that's a shot that breaks down for me pretty easily. I don't have the best technique, so it's just like the, the cadence of my serve feels easier to achieve time after time with the 100P. I don't know what it is. It's just really familiar for me. I have a quick thing just with the with the cosmetic of the new 100P because you were using that 2015 forever and quite a few times on like shoe reviews or whatever, you would use the all white Wimbledon version. That was like, your like 
one that you would like keep by close to your desk and it was very very personal to you so i <laughs> i was wondering the new one with mostly white cosmetic did that have something to do with finally switching out switching over it was like, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe subconsciously actually the other other racket i brought today is one of those uh, Wimbledon Cosmetics 2015. I only have one hitter of the um, 2022 version because I like the quarter grip size, and that's um, what I I only have one in the quarter grip size of the. I actually the cosmetic is not the not the reason I switched though. It really yeah, yeah, yeah. down to like the feel of the racket, and um, but it makes it easy to spot as I have mostly. Uh, all the black and green ones, and then I have two Wimbledon cosmetics from that uh, that uh, 2015 version. And then, although I don't think that came out in 2015, I'm not sure which year that was. It was a couple years later, I want to say, but yeah. um, and only one of the ATS. Yeah, it definitely stands out. The new one. Yeah, for sure. Um, now, Chris, can you talk to us about what differentiates the Tour 100P from the Tour 100? Yeah, before I get there, I also Tiff mentioned some head racks, and I didn't bring up the head brand earlier. But I think um, from there, these tours would sit somewhere between like the speed and the prestiges for me, mm -hmm. depending on which model. You know, you would look at on the tour line, they're a bit more, I think a lot of them are a bit more forgiving than a, than a prestige and not quite as forgiving maybe as, as a speed. So uh, it's been a long time since I had the Gravity Tour too, but that's a, that's a good call, Tiff, right there, because that one's... I remember being super fast and, you know, coming through contact nicely too, which the I think the 100P does well as well. Um, back to the tools. Um, the 100P, I think, really dials in the control for me. I can take a big cut of the ball. It's got that, you know, tight string bed. Um, and I, I just get a lot of feel. I really like it on a, a slice or like hitting a drop volley or trying to, you know, find an angle or a little sneaky trick shot or something like that. Whereas the, uh, the, one, the regular 100 a uh, super nice forgiving racket, good pop. I um, think if you you know, like to rip the ball with a bit more top spin, um, that one's the way to go. I hit, especially on the backhand, pretty flatly, and so the I like the 100p in that regard. Nice. Let's talk about the 98, just because that's my favorite of them, and I don't <laughs> want to talk about the 95 yet. <laughs> the, the Tour 98... This is a racket that I think a bunch of us um, started playtesting all of them together. And the 98 was my favorite from the bunch, but I didn't know it was the 98. I actually thought it was the 100P because, again, for me, I, I found that, like, easy power but still a little bit of control. Um, this racket is one that, like, the more I hit with it, I do still keep coming back to it. And I know, like, some people want to kind of, like, debunk that it's so, like, it's very playable, like, it's. It's a great, I don't know where you would put it, but it really has been such a fun racket for me. And maybe it goes back to kind of what Tiffany said. There's some familiar familiarity in the racket, even just like the grip shape and everything. But um, Troy, I know you hit it a bunch. How did you like the 98? Is there anything specific on the specs that like maybe would be more appealing to certain players? Yeah, I really like the 98. I, I'd probably say um, for me, it was probably the, the best one out of the group as well. Um, we'll talk more about the 95 and really like that one. But um, something that stood out to me is that um, with the the weight being lighter than the th uh, than the 95, it kind of felt like it had, it's not even balanced, but it kind of felt like it had a little bit more substantial feel to the head of the racket mm -hmm. versus the 95. So I kind of liked how that kind of clubbed through the ball, kind of carried through the ball from the baseline. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, it's got pretty good control and feel. Um, maybe not like that, you know, really classic player frame feel, but it's still very solid. And then you get that forgiveness, a pretty big sweet spot, mm -hmm. and a little bit more pop and power than I'd say, you know, like definitely your traditional player frame. So it's got that nice kind of balance to it. I wouldn't say it's quite maybe easy power and as fast as the E-Zone 98, but for me, it kind of has that sort of overall performance um so it's just a really nice racket and then you know for everybody out there that knows kind of the rackets we play with and the specs it's easy to customize so just a little i think just for me just a little bit of uh, added weight in the hoop to get the swing weight closer to like the 330s and then a leather grip you could add weight to the 
inside the trap door with tungsten putty. So it's, it's easy to get that racket up to like 12 ounces or whatever and really dial it into your spec. So I think it's a nice frame. And then also another thing that um, stood out to me is with that 1619 pattern, it's a little denser of a 1619. It's got the the eight holes in the throat mm -hmm. versus like the 95 that has six holes in the throat. So it's a little tighter uh, with the mains. And, you know, to me, it, it kind of played like 1619, but almost more like 1620-ish. So I like that aspect too. Nice. And Tiff and Chris, I know you guys actually both got to hit a bunch. Tiff, you just borrowed my racket the other day. So you most recently hit with that Tour 98. Um, how's the, how did you guys like this racket? How does it fit into your game? Tiffany, let's start with you. Well, I really, you know, and when I, we were hitting them all, I was actually drawn um, to the, my, of course, my racket, the 100P, but the 98 as well. I found it really um, comparable. The head size is slightly smaller. The string pattern is more open, but the 1820 on the 100P is not the tightest, 100, uh, tightest 1820 that you'll ever see. It's one of the head size, and then, um, and Troy has mentioned the number of, mains that go through the throat um there's only, there's only how six. many there is <laughs> six yeah so yeah on the 100 piece so that's actually a pretty a pretty spaced apart uh, mains for the 18 mains yeah yeah so it's it and it has that same like in between feel i feel like as far as it's not like your super low trajectory 1820 and the so it, it very much like the the 98 to me so i felt really like it's an in-between kind of racket. And uh, when I was hitting with your racket the other day, I just really was like, oh, I really like this one too. It's just the way it comes through the air. It has that some familiar feel. And even though the string pattern is a little bit more open, maybe it's a slightly smaller head size. And uh, I felt it was just as controllable for me. I think uh, I would have fun playing with both. I'm just used to the 100p. So. Nice. Chris, what about you? I know we got to mash some balls with these rackets when we did the R take, and it was super fun hitting with them. How do you like the Tour 98? I do like the Tour 98. I really like the 95. <laughs> <laughs> That's my pick of the litter. But the 98 is um, it's a more forgiving racket, as Troy mentioned. It's the one if you like to customize your rackets. That's the one to go with, just because you have way more room to do it than the, the 95. Is I think pretty much already there. Um, I, you know, you could add a leather grip to it if you wanted to uh, make it a bit more tip light. But the, yeah, the 98 has that customization factor to it. It's, um, it's one of those rackets that's just really forgiving in the sense that you know what you're getting out of it every time you hit the ball and you can trust it. So I like that when I'm coming inside the baseline, I'm hitting an approach shot. I feel like I can stay on the gas with a lot of confidence, even when the camera's rolling or the points are getting tight, you know, and there's a little bit of pressure there. I still feel like I can swing big, go for the lines, and really trust what I'm going to get out of that racket. And so for me, that's probably my biggest takeaway on that one. It's one of those rackets that just kind of does, you know, everything pretty well. Feels good on serve. Uh, it's a nice racket to return with. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a solid racket, but I do prefer the 95. <laughs> well, that's perfect. Let's talk about the 95. Um, the first thing that I'm just going to say real quick is that this Tour 95 does not even remotely feel like it's 95 square inches. So, Chris, take it from there. Let's get your feedback, and then we'll jump to Troy. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a 95, you know, but um, I can shank a ball with a 115, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it never really, um, you know, scared me or going to going down to a mid or anything like that. And um, I love the plow through I get on my shots with a 95. The ball just really pushes through the court super nicely. I had a bigger serve with it. Um, uh, the serve and my backhand and my two favorite shots to hit for that racket. They just get way more penetration on my on my shots. And then when I was over in Europe, I took the Tour 95 with me. And playing on the clay, it really helped me out because, you know, the ball slows down so much when it <clears throat> comes off the clay core. And so I found with some other rackets, my shots were sitting up a little bit. But with the 95, I was still just getting the ball away. And once I got it wide, my opponent was still hitting winners. So uh, it was really nice. Yeah, I just uh, I love that what we call plow through power where the, the mass of the racket just pushes the ball deep with pace and weight. And, um, that's, that's what I love about that racket. Nice. Troy, what was your experience? 
Yeah, I'd agree uh, pretty much with what Chris was saying. It's uh, it is pretty user friendly for a ninety five. It's its swing weight isn't like crazy high. So at least for me, um, which I like in like the three thirty range, I think it's in like the three closer to three twenty. So it's it feels uh, pretty maneuverable for its weight. Um, I did notice that the sixteen nineteen pattern and it being pretty spaced apart, really easy access to spin, has a very you know headlight tip light feel. So I felt like um, you know. I could really get the ball to do with the combination of the 95 head size, the precision of it and that kind of easy spin access. I really could like pinpoint spots in the court and kind of use the crafty angles. So I like that aspect of it. Um, you know, I like the previous versions. I think the feel of this one um, maybe slightly improved. Um, I'd say if I had to knock it, um, maybe hitting it side by side with like uh, the V core 95 from Yonex, I get a little bit, more precision and a little more control from that slightly denser string bed. Mm -hmm. And then maybe coming from like my older days with the 6195 18 by 20, um, maybe just a little bit more all out feel and precision. Um, but for those people that want like an, a, a precise 95, that's easy to spin, easy to swing for the most part. I think it's a, there's really nothing else like it on the market except for maybe like, uh, maybe kind of close, like a Dunlop CX200 Tour 1619 might be okay. somewhat similar. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have a bunch of questions that we've been getting. There's been a lot of buzz around these rackets. Um, while I look at those questions, I'm going to ask you guys each to kind of talk about some of your favorite string setups that you found to work best in these rackets. I know, Tiffany, since you're now using this as your racket of choice, you've probably been testing a bunch of string. And I know, Chris and Troy, you guys are always testing new strings. So, Tiff, what have you loved string-wise in your new Tour 100P? My favorite before in the older version was a multi poly hybrid at 52 and 54. But so far, what I've been my favorite has been um, Hypergee, the 125. Uh, we had, and that, that was my favorite string. We did that because we were play testing at the time, had it up at 52 or 53 pounds, which is a little bit tighter than I would have preferred. I like to string mine. Um, between 48 and 50. So right now, I think it would be just dialing in that exact tension, um, probably start at 50, because I felt pretty good at 52. If the comfort was there. I just prefer my tension to be just slightly lower. Uh, I just felt like I was getting really good spin. Um, I think it's one of those things where, yeah, here, 18, 20, and I don't hit with a lot of spin. So I mean, we're not talking rafa like numbers when i say i was getting a lot of spin but i was getting plenty for me and i actually have clocked twice before when we were um when we use take the data that i would actually get some really higher spin numbers from my own racket just uh then even if it was versus an open string pattern i think it's just like i could swing this one faster and the hyper g i feel pretty confident so i feel i can swing out and get that spin that i want Nice. Chris, what are you liking string-wise in these rackets? So I hit, um, obviously, polys. We test mostly with polys, so I hit polys in all of them, and, but I also hit the 98 with um, a multi-filament. And when we were shooting the r -take, I actually had one with a multi in it that I hit a little bit. Um, and then uh, also um, I hit the 95 with a multi as well. And so I actually thought the rackets played, you know, when you get used to the, the, the bite you get out of a, a co-poly string, you, the ball always seems to get that curve on it and dip down inside the lines. And when you switch back to a multi, it's, sometimes the ball doesn't do that and it flies a little bit long. But I think with these rackets, there's still enough control in them that I can go with a multi, just go up a couple of pounds to uh, firm up the string bit that way and make it play a little crisper and, and get the ball to dip inside the line. So that was nice. Um, and as, as far as actual strings, I hit it with a bunch of different, I mean, we tested these rackets for so long, hit them with a bunch of the different um, Prince Polys, uh, we hit them with Hyper G, yeah, I used one of the Prince, uh, the Prince Maltese was in there, I can't remember which one it was, um, and I also hit um, the uh, the 95 with Technofiber Multi Feel in there as well, so yeah, um, really versatile rackets, I think you, you got lots of options there. I don't think I actually tried one with a hybrid, though. So that's that's one thing I missed. Troy, did you get to try a hybrid in any of these? Um, 
poly poly I hybrid? Don't <laughs> think I did, but I was gonna say if if cost wasn't an issue, I probably would go with a, like a a natural gut okay. in the mains and try that out, like a Babolat VS gut seventeen in the mains, and then you know a nice um, kind of smooth poly in the cross, like a Prince Tour XP mm -hmm. seventeen gauge. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be pretty sweet to try in like the Tour ninety eight. Or even in like the 100P, I think that'd be really nice. Yeah. But mostly hit it with polys. Um, I'm actually a pretty big fan of the Prince Tour XP. Um, I like the 125 or even like the 16 gauge just for a little more control, a little bit more weight to the string bed mm -hmm. uh, with going with that thicker gauge. So I like that, um, especially the green color. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it just takes me back to the old Prince B string, but that's one that I like. has a nice, firm, crisp feel to it. Decent pocketing for a poly. And then obviously I'm a big fan of Hyper G just like the rest of us. Um, in the uh, 98, I'd probably be going like the 125 or the 120 gauge. Um, in the 95, I actually preferred the 16 1.30 just to kind of make it feel a little more dense. And mm -hmm. also it gives it a little bit more substantial feel, slightly more swing weight with the thicker gauge. Nice. Yeah. Do you know what the black string was that we had? Was it Diablo Pro? The, the black string? Yeah. I personally have Vortex in here right now, which is black. Okay, maybe Vortex. But I think we also hit it with... If it was a black string, I think it may have been the... Tour XC. Tour XC, maybe? Yes, I think it was Tour XC during the play test. I know we... I think we might have tried XC and XP maybe in black. I think, yeah, and then we also had uh, Tour Diablo Prism in some of the hitters. Yeah. The rainbow one, which I just think is fun. <laughs> kind of sits in the middle of this... And then Michelle, have you tried them strung up? Because you string tighter than all of us, I think. Um, have you, <laughs> I'm sure you've tied this racket in the higher tension range. How does it feel? Yeah, it feels great. Actually, the one the hitter that I've kind of played around with customizing. Um, oh, this is actually Prince Triad in here. Vortex and, Triad, yeah. And J-Dub strung it up for me. And we were hitting yesterday. Um, we're testing a new racket that's coming out. And it, I wasn't getting along with it great. So I switched to this for my point play and it instantly was like, you still feel so much comfort when you're hitting the sweet spot, which is massive. And it was just like such a dramatic experience from the other racket that felt kind of a little stiffer, a little boardier. And I know, who am I? This is not what I normally say, but it's like comfortable. Yes, even at higher tensions. Yeah, I think the combination of the, the soft flex on that racket and uh, we've tested the Vortex Triad. Yes. And it's a very sharp spin friendly, yes. but it's much, much softer than, say, your RPM Blast or, you know, some of those firmer, deader black polys. It's 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 a pretty soft arm friendly option. So, so th that makes sense. And I totally forgot. I am. I was told by J-Dub that we can give away some strings. We have a bunch of prints co-poly strings that we're going to give away and I, I swear this wasn't planned but like this little chat goes perfectly with that we'll say it at the end but um anyone interested that's listening we have a limited supply if you're in the united states we will send you out a prince co-polyester to try and you can try some of these strings that we've been talking about so just reach out email us at podcast at tennis-warehouse.com or comment in the comment section and we'll get the first 75 people that respond um, to try some of this string that we're talking about. Good segue. Thanks, guys. <laughs> um, there's also been a ton of other questions. We'll just kind of run through them. There was a lot of chatter. And Tiff, we'll start with you because I know you kind of already made this comparison. But can you compare these tour rackets? This is very general, obviously. But to the E-Zones and most in particular, the elusive E-Zone DR rackets. Oh, yeah. I mean, the DR has been a while since I have played with it. I, I think that the feel, well, one, I find that the E-Zones offer a little bit more free power, um, especially like on the 100 uh, side. And they also offer a little bit easier depth. Now, I've said that it's a, not a super tight 18 by 20, but it is a slightly tighter string spacing. So the the, the ball doesn't quite get the same arc. Um, Feel-wise, I always feel that Yonex has a different feel just because of the head shape of the rackets. And so there is that distinct Yonex kind of response that you're going to get with that nice response up high on the string bed. 
I think comfort wise, I would, I would say that they're really similar between the two, but they're just not, it's been a long time since I was able to hit the DR. One of my favorite E zones that I recall too, but I feel like maybe that one has a bit more of a muted feel than the, the um, ATS, which isn't super crisp, but you, I have a good ball feedback still. Nice. We'll go around the table. Chris, how do you, how would you compare the E-Zone 98 or the DR 98 to the Tour 98? Yeah, from, I would agree with um, Tiff. The E-Zone of rack, is a racket for me. If I won, if I maybe come out of like a pure drive or something and I want a plush, a response, a little bit more feel for the ball, um, I'm going to sacrifice a bit of that, you know, pure drive magic, which is the power and, you know, it's just that big crushing power. Um, I'm going to give that up a little bit. I would, you know, then E-Zone all day long is where I'm going, especially with the DR. That was a sweet playing stick with a really magical feel to it. But <clears throat> the tours, um, they take the feel another step further. So you're getting more control, more feel for the ball. But again, you, now now you're giving up a little bit of the, of the power compared to the E-Zone and then, the, you know, and that which gives up power compared to something like a computer. Anything else to add to that, Troy? No, I, would, I definitely agree. Um the the key word or term that Tiff said was ball feel a little a little more ball feel from the tour, especially the ATS, um, and then like what Chris was saying, yeah, compared to the the DR ninety eight, haven't hit with the DR in a really long time, but like Ezo ninety eight type racket, um, definitely a slight step in control, a little more feel with the tour ninety eight, but I did hit with the V Core Pro ninety seven three ten the other day. And I will say that the night this ninety eight definitely gives a little more forgiveness and a little easy, definitely e- a little easier power mm-hmm. compared to that. So okay. maybe somewhere in that that bridge between a V Core Pro series and then like the Ezo V Core Pro ninety seven and Ezo ninety eight. There you have it. Um, let's see. This would be another one, Chris. You actually didn't bring this up when you brought up head rackets, and I kind of was considering comparing it to this. But how do you compare these tours to the radicals? So the radicals for me um, are a little bit crisper playing. Um, <clears throat> they're uh, here's a great T dub phrase. They're a little bit more point and shoot. <laughs> um, okay. When I, yes. When I, when I find you know with the radicals, <clears throat> when I line the string bed up, the ball gets in and out really quickly, especially on a volley and wherever I've got that string bed pointing, um, the ball is like it's crisp. It's in and out, clean feeling. It's fast when it goes straight to that target. And I, Love that about the radicals, and then with the the tours, the ball is just going to sit on the strings a little longer. So on on a volley, I'm gonna it's going to sit there a bit more, and then on a on a ground stroke, I'm you know we're talking milliseconds, but you feel like you carry it through your your swing a little bit more. Whereas with a radical, it's, you know, it fires out a, a little bit quicker for me. Nice. Uh, would you guys agree with that, Troy? How do you feel about the radicals versus the tours? Yeah, for sure. And it's kind of like when Chris says that, like when I hear radical, I jump back to like my old days or the old school radicals, like Mm -hmm. the micro gel or like the flex point and that those were actually really soft. But then I got to, I got to train myself to be like, no, this is more graphene material, you know, like the, and definitely the current current radicals are definitely that firmer, crisper, exactly what Chris was explaining. So yeah, definitely, um, a little bit softer with, uh, with the tour 98, um, but maybe not as soft as like those old school old radicals. School. And sometimes I got to train my mind to get away from that. Cause that's what I think of with those ones. The uh, radical pro, I think would be a good one to throw in the demo bag with, uh, with the 98 tool. So the reason why I was saying that I could kind of put it in that category is for me, it's the same amount of like ability to hit out but also find some control so yes the fails different for me but the playability of what I get on my end is similar so I feel like I feel comfortable swinging out with both rackets Tiffany how do you how would you compare to a radical I really a combination of what you all said I like Troy when I think when I first hear radical I think microgel and I too it's kind of evolved since then so the feel has gotten crisper but like you too, I do feel like it's definitely in that same realm of swing out and I still get a good amount of control um, and depth and power is similar to the, the tour line. So it's going to come down to like, if you're playing these two side by side, I, for me, it is like they're really, they come through the air similarly. I feel like the same amount of confidence when I'm swinging, it just comes down to, do I like that, as Chris was referencing, 
millisecond extra whatever it feels like I'm holding the ball or the quicker exit. I feel like Chris, you know, being a car guy, he could like kind of <laughs> like give the analogy of like the horsepower isn't crazy different between the two rackets. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. when you step on that gas pedal, you know, like the 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 responsiveness is that that's mostly like the feel kind of thing, you know. <laughs> How fast can you get that ra- that <laughs> racket, that, that car to go? <laughs> Um, another question on a comparison. Uh, we've had some people ask, how does it compare to the CTS Synergy DB26 as well as the Synergy 98? I know I'm going to I'm going to start us off here. Yeah. The I'm going to allude to the CTS racket. I love that racket. It's That's so the fun. Synergy 26. You've probably yes. hit that the most out of all of us. I think so. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I still have some in my bag and it reminds me of like Jennifer Capriotti and all that. But what I love so much about the racket, which is something that you talked about, Troy, is that it was a is it was a tighter. It's a 1618, mm-hmm. which you think would be really open and a lot of bite. But if you look at it and especially like someone who strings the rackets a mm-hmm. lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Th- those center main strings are like tighter. very tight. It's yes. tighter than most 1820. Yes. Yeah. And then it also had like a thicker beam at the, the tip, which kind of helped with stability and power and plow through, in my opinion. And then a little bit more feel maybe down in the throat. So I would say this is like a more modern version of that racket. Um, I don't the Synergy 98, that newer one, was it 18 by 19? I think it's 1818. 1818. I don't know, Chris. 1818. I don't compare. These two does not, does not compare, but that's just me. So I'm going to pass it on. <laughs> Troy, you want to take it? Yeah. So that uh, Synergy 98 compared yes. to this Tour 98, um, that one uh swings a little more substantial that one has a pretty beefy swing weight mm-hmm. so that one to me swings like kind of like that v7 blade 1820 mm-hmm. a really head hefty kind of feel mm-hmm. also the t fight 305 the medvedev mm-hmm. has that high swing weight so it swings like that the synergy does but softer than this racket i mean this one's already soft but that it's one's even like softer. That's feels why I don't... even more flexible yeah. so that one kind of to me feels more like that older v7 blade this one a, li- a little firmer and just a little more pop, even though it's still very comfortable. Nice. And and more spin friendly too. Chris, what are your thoughts on these two comparisons? Yeah, I think um, Troy nailed it with that T5 305 Medvedev racket. Um, I just find that the Synergy's string bed is a little bit more controlled. I get a bit more zip and bite out of the T5. Um, you know, a little bit more lift on a top spin shot, um, whereas I've maybe got a, a little bit more control on a, a drop volley with the Synergy and then the old school Synergy, the 26, that's a racket I really have to play with a multi, interestingly. Um, I didn't like it with, with a poly and, and obviously the new tours I can play with, with polys. So that was the biggest difference for me there. Just the, <clears throat> that classic Synergy, just a, a little bit too uh, muted and dead for me once a poly went in it. Tiff, any feedback on those two rackets? I actually, the Synergy 98 is just, out of my reach. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't, so I really, I mean, if you're going to compare the, like this tour 98 to the synergy 98 for me, the tour 98 is definitely in, I can pick up and use that racket synergy 98. I can't pick up and use that racket. It's just, it swings too heavily for me. <laughs> yeah. It definitely has that more clubby feel to it. than the synergy 98. Okay. Makes sense. So hopefully that answers that question. And then, Chris, I think you'll be the best one to answer this one. There have been a few questions about if there are going to be any 03 versions of the tours coming out. Not that I've heard yet, but, um, you know, Prince has a really long history with 03 technology, and they always seem to sneak one in the line somewhere. So wouldn't be surprised. But, um, yeah, I've not not seen any or, you know, heard of any 03 versions yet. And then is there anything that you can kind of maybe allude to that might be on the horizon coming from Prince that we can share with the audience? I mean, I think it's been really cool that they brought back some of the classic rackets. You know, we've got the Tor Diablo, um, Mid Plus, and, and then the Synergy as well. So um, <clears throat> hopefully they, they continue. I would like to see them continue um, bringing back some of those uh, those classics to hit again. So hopefully we'll see some of that. But yeah, nothing, nothing um, that I could share. <laughs> no worries. And then, Tiff, this one might be for you. 
and me, but actually Troy, have you customized your two or 100 P at all? And if so, how? No, <laughs> I have not. I didn't customize the previous version, and I, um, yeah, I like it in stock form. I mean, other than throwing on over grips and new over grip, re replacing those when they wear out. Nope. You're just gonna paint it all white and put Wimbledon down the side of it, and you'll be good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, let's talk about the customizations that I've done on the Tour 98. And by me, I mean the customization. I'm pretty sure you put the the weight on here, Troy. But I'll tell you what it's at. It is just under 12 ounces, 11.97 with a 336 swing weight. Do you want to talk about what you did or where you added weight? Well, definitely there's weight added at like the 2, 10 o'clock region up here in the hoop. So kind of up in the corners of the hoop, which is pretty common for like when we add weight, um, cause it kind of get, gets up towards the top where it's easy to increase the swing weight, but you still get a little bit of effect on the sides of the frame, which would increase the torsional stability, even though it already has the ATS, you just kind of doubled up on the ATS. Yeah. Um, but then as far as the handle goes, I don't know if we added any tungsten inside or not. We may have, I a Thank little bit. I can't. Maybe. I can't recall. I don't know. If so, I don't know. I um, know because um, we have. We've had. You've had quite a few samples of these rackets, yes. so we've kind of tweaked and modified a, quite a few of them. But um, definitely got the swing weight up in the mid three thirties, which is pretty much where some of your like RFs were at. A little, mm -hmm. You know, some of them. Yeah. And then um, you know, the more you hit with it, I think we could probably even add a little more weight to the handle. Maybe make it like twelve two, twelve three, mm -hmm. and that would probably be even more. Closer to your normal spec without being like thirteen one, yeah. like or something crazy. Like yeah. I think one of your RFs was like it's it's yeah really heavy, heavy. or like yeah. twelve nine something like that. So yeah, yeah, definitely some uh, easy customization there. Michelle, hold on, I got a, I have a question for you. Uh oh, <laughs> if yes. you were going to go play a tournament next weekend, would you take the tour ninety eight or would you take the RF? Okay, this is a really tough question. I would take the RF. Um, I hit the other day, it was like a Friday hit, which like for you guys listening, like a lot of times on Fridays, at least for me, my vibe is like, I hit with like what I want to hit with, not what we're play testing. It's a fun hit. I want to, and I remember just picking up the RF first thing. And I just instantly remember why I love that racket so much. And I've had some people that I've hit with, um, internally tell me that my ball is definitely not as big with the tour eight ninety eight, 98, but I'm also aging. So I feel like if this is the tour 98 is the racket that I should take to the tournament, but because I'm like that emotional person, I would take the RF 97, <laughs> maybe get a few free points here and there with it. I don't know. I don't know. What would, what would you suggest for me, Chris? I, I mean, I think you've nailed it. I think your ball comes through with a little bit more pace with the RF, but I think you have a, a bit more variety in your game with the Tour 98. I don't want to give too much away because, you know, I don't want to reveal some of my tactics when I'm trying to battle against you. <laughs> with, let's put it this way. When you've got the RF in your hands, I'm covering the line a lot. <laughs> Just because you, that line drive you hit with that racket's a really big shot, and I know if I don't cover it, if I'm one step shy of that, it's past me super quickly. So I have to cover the line. And with the Tour 98, I feel like you go cross court a little bit more with it and you kind of mix up your play a little bit. There you go. Secret now. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would, I've alluded to this before and Tiff, maybe you can chime in too. It's like the nostalgia. I grew up in juniors playing with Prince and something about having a Prince in my hand. I feel like sometimes I'm like taken back to 16 year old Michelle who like hit more than three balls. <laughs> I don't know. Tiffany, do you feel that way ever where you're like, okay, I, I used to be this player with Prince and then you get a Prince back in your hand. You're like, okay, I'm still this player. Yeah. I mean, I think I've always been more of a grinder. I don't, I don't hit a big ball. I wish I could hit one of those down the line forehands that you hit, yeah. but there is something to be said. I mean, I grew up playing with a CTS racket. Um, so when the tours came out, that felt really familiar. And then again, I think you, I think you mentioned it too, the grip shape. It's mm -hmm. just like, this is what I learned to play tennis with. And it just feels so familiar, so right in my hand. It's like, I know where my hand is on the grip. When I'm switching grips, know exactly where I am. So yeah, 
nostalgia and just it just feels right. <laughs> yes. So basically, Michelle, if you're going to play a tournament on a clay court. Oh, gosh. That's or not happening. a dingles tournament. <laughs> a dingles. This dingles. might be the variety dingles, you need. Dingles, I have. Okay. Dingles, that changes the game because this racket is so much more maneuverable than the RF. Cross court angles. Yeah. Variety. And, that's, and that's why you see probably a little more variety too. Drop shot. I know. I have touch. Who yeah, am I? Yeah. With but this if you're racket. playing on a really fast hard court or indoor hard court, you'd RF. probably go with the RF. Okay. <laughs> we'll coach you up. Let's see if Michelle signs up for a tournament anytime soon and then we can tackle that. I think that that covers everything, you guys. Does anything, did I miss anything? Do we need to add anything? What else? Demo ones. Yeah, I think people just need to get out there and demo these rackets. Um, you know, we talked a lot about them, but I, you know, I'd love to hear, if, you know, someone after this demoed it and then left some comments and just let us know what they thought of these rackets because um, I, I think they're really nice playing rackets and it'd be, uh, be good to hear some, uh, some other opinions. And I was just going to say, uh, one thing that we were talking about previously, um, maybe I, I didn't really hit it much, but maybe Chris, or I don't know, anybody wants to give a quick shout out to the two ninety. Yes, I didn't hit that much, but I actually, I know there was a talk tennis message board play test and there were a bunch of people that were excited to hit that. So did you guys have a chance Tiff or Chris to hit the two ninety at all? Not this version, I have it, but I know it's a great, um, a lot of people, especially on the message board, love to use that one as a, a platform racket. It's because it's got that low static weight, but it has the, the same, like the feel and everything. And so you can customize to your heart's desire. So my golden rule usually is 300 grams and above, um, poly all day long. Go below that, I'm pretty much just sticking to multis, but this was one of those rackets that um, I would be happy to break that um, that code I live by just because you can put a poly in it and it's still super comfortable. Um, and then uh, I think if you want to open up the sweet spot even more and get a little bit more free depth and pace on your ball, then you can put a multi in it and it's still got so much control that you can easily get the ball to, to drop down inside the line. So stock form, you know, I think it's, it's pretty versatile, super fast. So you can really get it up the back of the ball quickly um, or under the ball too, if you want to, you know, do some slice and dice. I think it's a good double stick. So yeah, it's, and it's I know it's it's been really popular too. So um, it surprised me actually how popular the two ninety has been. Nice. So I mean, you could do a whole demo pack of just the two rackets and figure out what you're, which is kind of fun because that's what we essentially kind of do when we start a play test. It's like you bring out all four models and you hit them and. Whatever you jive with usually is uh, probably one of the rackets you're going to be reviewing. I mean, so. who would have thought before this group came out that we needed a, a Tour 98? Like, I, didn't, I was like, the, what's wrong with the Tour line? We don't need a Tour 98. And then it came out. I was like, man, why haven't we had the Tour 98 from the get go? You know, it's, it's a good racket. Yeah. And like Chris said, we would love to hear your guys' feedback. We know that a lot of people have already hit these, demoed them and play tested them or bought them even. So wherever you're listening, um, leave us feedback. We, we would love to hear your experience as well. And as I mentioned, we have some Prince Copoly string to give away. So again, wherever you're listening, if you're on the audio, just shoot us an email at podcast at tennis-warehouse.com. If you're on video, leave us a comment in the YouTube comment section below. And I think that's it. Happy hitting. We're good. Yay. Yay we didn't have you. a power outage. 